I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that a notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. It is now 6 p.m. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the December board meeting of the Conroe Independent School District. I would invite you to stand while Mr. Huber leads us in the invocation and Mrs. Bush leads us with the pledges. Let's bow your heads. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are certainly grateful for this day. We are grateful for this building, for this opportunity we have to meet as a school board trustee. We ask thy spirit to be upon us. We ask thee to help open our minds and our hearts to the students and the teachers that we serve this day. We're grateful for all those involved in the work and the diligent work that they have prepared. And we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much, Mr. Huber, Mrs. Bush. Item 2A, Dr. Stockton, special recognition of the 2014 6A Volleyball State Championship. Well, this is indeed a very special moment for the school district and the school board tonight. And I'd like to invite Greg Colson, principal of the Woodlands High School, to come to the podium. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, member of the board, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to recognize a very sp special group of young ladies and their coaches. Uh, anytime we get to come here and recognize students, it's a special evening. I uh, also want to thank you for the support that you give all of our extracurricular activities to give our students an opportunity to participate in athletics, fine arts, academics. Uh, it really it, it makes the high school experience a special thing. Uh, you don't win championships without great athletes. And tonight you're gonna to meet some very special athletes from the Woodlands High School. Uh, and I'll let Coach Madison inter introduce those. But you also don't win championships without great coaching. Um, the job that, that Coach Madison and her assistants did this year in having the girls in the right spots at the right time, uh, it was like a, a work of art. Uh, they went in at the right time, did what they were supposed to do, and then maybe two balls later were substituted out. But it was a real pleasure to watch the ladies play and the coaches coach this year. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce Leslie Madison, the best volleyball coach in the state of Texas. <laughs> Thank you again, and thank you, Dr. Stockton and members of the board for recognizing uh, these amazing young women. Um, I have the blessing of coaching each of them. Not only are, like Mr. Colson said, are they great athletes, but they're great kids uh, with great character, and that's something we pride ourselves on, um, on our team. So I'd like to introduce all of them. I also would like to tell you we have 10 members on our team and all 10 of them uh, were academic all district this year, and all five of our seniors were academic all state, which means they carried a 94 GPA or above in grades nine through 11. So not only are they athletic, they're very smart and uh, amazing kids. So if they can come up here and then I'll introduce them to you. I'd also like my assistant coaches to come up, please. Okay, to begin with, on the end over here, I have Junior, Hannah Hickman. Uh, Hannah is um, a right side, or was a right side for us this year, and she has committed to play at Belmont University uh, when she graduates next year. So that's Junior, Hannah Hickman. We have Senior, Courtney Quinn, was an outside hitter. Uh, Courtney is going to play volleyball at the University of Pennsylvania after graduating. Uh, senior, Rachel Reed. Rachel Reed's a middle blocker and will play at the University of Southern California next season. Uh, libero senior Cody Lee. Cody will play volleyball at the University of Miami next season. Uh, senior Julia Page, who's a middle blocker. Julia will play volleyball at University of Louisiana Lafayette 
next year. Uh, junior uh, outside hitter, defensive specialist for us this year, Haley Ryer. Junior setter slash defensive specialist, Colby Quinn. Junior setter, Gray Kennedy. Senior setter, Kendall Cook. <laughs> uh, junior outside hitter, Bella Penton. And then my assistant coaches, Karen Lucas, Paula Miller, and Megan McDougall. And although some of these other girls are uncommitted, I feel fairly certain that most of them will go on to play college volleyball as well. And um, this is your 2014 6A State Volleyball Champions. And thank you again for recognizing us. Just a few words. Um, you know, uh, we all stand here just in awe and just humbled by you young ladies. Uh, you, know, you talked about character. Uh, the district is just so proud of y'all, not just the way that you uh, represented us on the court, but how you just represented us just every day at school and in the classroom. That is so impressive of how well y'all have done academically, and we couldn't be more proud. I know your parents are so proud of you as well. Uh, but as a school district, it's my honor and privilege to uh, present this plaque to Coach Madison and all of y'all, uh, rep uh, recognizing your accomplishment as state champions. And you know, uh, I know you, got, you, you girls, uh, uh, you know, when you play other teams, they're like gearing up for y'all every single game because that's it's so hard to repeat like that. And so that's why this, this is uh, this is such a huge accomplishment as I understand that, you know, the coaches uh, pulled you all together and, and uh, we're just uh, very, very proud of you. And again, we'd like to uh, recognize y'all and present you with this plaque. If you, if you ladies would kind of spin out and yeah. come by and take everybody's hand, we'd appreciate it. Just turn around. Just turn around. Just turn around. Just turn around. I said spin out, but I didn't say turn around. Congratulations. 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 Thank you so much for all you do. Congratulations. Thank you for the awesome job. Awesome book you're one of them. Yeah, really, y'all are Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Merry Christmas, okay? Merry Christmas. <laughs> you gonna find out the horror with this thing. Did I hear her write 94 average? Yes. That's all right. <laughs> Almost don't understand that. <laughs> Item 2B, Dr. Stockton, Special District Reg Recognition, Mr. Greg Ship, 2015 ACTE Administrator of the Year. Well, we have another very, very special recognition, someone we're very proud of, and who reps, represents our district with the finest of character. And here to introduce him, I'll ask uh, Dr. Null to do that, please. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It's an honor to be here this evening to recognize a fine man and a great educator. We all know that the strength of our great district comes from our people. Our programs flourish because we have the best people in the business leading the way. While we know that to be true, it is great celebration when those outside of Conroe ISD recognize that as well. Each year, the Association of Career and Technical Education recognizes great teachers and administrators in the field. The competition begins at the state level and advances to regionals and finally four national finalists are honored. We previously honored Greg Ship as the Texas Administrator of the Year a few months ago, but he's been very busy since then. In April of 2014, Mr. Ship was named the Regional Award recipient and invited to attend the Career Tech Vision 2014 conference in Nashville, along with the three other regional honorees. During the awards gala, Greg was recognized as a national award winner. 
With the passage of House Bill 5 and the booming industrial growth in our area, career and technical education is as important and impactful now as it has ever been. We are fortunate to have a consummate professional and a man of outstanding class and character to lead our teachers and guide our programs. Please join me in welcoming the Connor Wise DCT coordinator and ACTE National Administrator of the Year, Mr. Greg Schiff. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, Mr. President, board members, I'm deeply humbled to be before you this evening. My father, who was a remarkable man, uh, imparted many important lessons to me. One of the most important was his guidance that people will know you by your character and how you treat others. And so to be before this group, is, is truly humbling because, ladies and gentlemen, I work with the very best and brightest. And as a matter of fact, I was sharing with Dr. Hines earlier that in this district, we do what many other districts just talk about. And I'm deeply grateful to be a part of this team. I have some special guests with me this evening, and I want to start with my career in technical education family, and I have Ms. Sandra Young with us tonight. Sandra is our department chair at Conroe High School. Please stand up, Ms. Young. Let me tell you a little bit about Ms. Young. She is a tireless advocate for career in technical education, not only on her campus, but in this district. She not only motivates me, she holds me accountable. <laughs> She's fiercely loyal to her students, to her campus, and to her district. If we are successful in career and technical education in this district, it is because of the efforts of Sandra Young and my other cadre representatives. Ms. Young, thank you so very much for what you do. I also have my family with me tonight. I want to introduce my wife, Lisa Shipp, my daughter, Lauren Shipp, my son, Stephen Shipp, and his girlfriend, Natalie Maxwell. Let me tell you a little bit about each one of those. <laughs> I'm so exceptionally fortunate to have a family who has been so supportive for me. My wife and I view the world through the same lens. She is my best advocate. She has been a tireless supporter of me and has hold, held me accountable, but also supported me through the very difficult times. If I have been successful, it is because of my wife, Lisa, and I want to thank you, Lisa, for all that you've done. My daughter, Lauren, who is the spiritual leader at our house, and I'm proud to say that. She's also an eighth grader at Alpha Omega Academy, and no greater privilege tonight than to be here. She's on the volleyball team, and she plays basketball, but what a great inspiration to see the state championship team. I can not imagine a greater inspiration for Lauren. My son, Stefan who I'm extraordinarily proud of, undergraduate and graduate degrees at Texas A&M, uh, senior accountant with the McNair Group, um, and just so fortunate, he has an identical twin brother, Gary, who couldn't be with us. Uh, Gary, uh, both his degrees at Brandeis University, his graduate work at, at Middlebury. But I'm so proud of, of my sons and my daughter, and Natalie Maxwell, Stephen's girlfriend, who undergraduate degree at Auburn, graduate degree at uh, Sam Houston, eat them up cats. Here's, here's the good news about uh, Steph and, and Natalie. They attended the Auburn A&M game and they survived that, so I think they're going to be okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once or twice a month I come home and I have a conversation with my wife about what it's like to work in this district. And here's how it goes. Here's what I'd share with her. Dr. Don Stockton has the highest expectations for us. He holds us to the highest standard, but he leads this district by example. And those are not just words. I was sharing with Dr. Hines about six years ago, my phone rang and that phone call changed my life. And Dr. Hines, you made that call and I'll never forget it because you got about halfway through the job offer and I said, yes, <laughs> and you were a little bit incredulous because I didn't ask about salary. <laughs> well, what I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm deeply honored and humbled to be here. 
and this is an extraordinary honor for me. It's an, an honor for me to represent us at the national level, but the greatest honor, the greatest professional honor that I have received and the greatest professional honor that I will ever receive was the day that my phone rang and I was given an opportunity to join this team. So Dr. Stockton, Dr. Hines, Dr. Knoll, Dr. Gibson, Mr. President, and board members, thank you so very much for the extraordinary honor of serving as a member of the Conroe ISD team. Thank you. Greg, uh, on behalf of the board, I echo everything you said. I, I think we have a great school district. Uh, we want to recognize you tonight as the 2015 Administrator of the Year for the Association of Career and Techno Technical Education. Um, you're just a good guy, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you say when, when it's all been said, our students are ultimately the victors in all of this. You and your team provide great alternatives if, if, if students want to attend secondary education, they can. If they want a career, they can. Absolutely. If they want technical education, they can. We can do all and that's what is great about our district. It doesn't matter what your, the student wants to do, we have alternatives. Mm -hmm. And again, we just want to say thank you for all you thank did. You. Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We got to give that one. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank, you so much. Thank you again, Mr. Ship, and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 2C, citizen participation. Ms. Ferris, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes, they have. Very good. The next 30 minutes have been de designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board cannot discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted a complaint policies that are designated to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, a person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their, for their presentation. Delegations of five or more must appoint one represent, representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Amanda Causey. Hi. Good evening, Dr. Stockton, President Husbands, and members of the board. My name is Amanda Causey. Uh, I am the treasurer and member advocacy team member for the Texas State Teachers Association of Conroe. Last month, there was a presentation about the targeted improvement plans put into place for Austin Elementary and Burnham Woods Elementary. The list of bulleted items are initiatives that are not just in place for these schools, but in the majority of schools across the district. Our members have reached out to our TSTA board and informed us that many of these new initiatives have created an undue burden in the amount of paperwork and meetings that occupy their planning periods and time before and after school. According to our Texas Academic Performance Report for 13-14 school year, nearly 71% of the teachers in our district have more than five years of teaching experience. These are teachers who have worked diligently each year to create a system of documentation for accountability that works for them as professionals. These new initiatives challenge our teachers' professional judgment. According to the Texas Education Code 11.164, 
The board is required to develop and review policies which limit redundant requests for information, as well as the number and length of written reports required of a teacher. We would like the district to take a look at all of the documentation that a teacher at each grade level is required to do <coughs> to help find a more streamlined process that addresses those needs that are required by the Texas Education Code and trust our teachers and staff to work in the best interests of our students. Another part of the targeted improvement plans that has been adopted on the majority of our campuses is the additional committees. Many of these committees meet before and after school unpaid. This is time away from their families that they are not compensated for. While every teacher we have spoken with values their role on their committees, they feel overwhelmed and undervalued due to the lack of compensation for their time. In closing, I'd like to state that our members are working diligently to meet the expectations of the state and our district. However, the amount of required paperwork, as well as the meetings that occupy our conference times before and after school, needs to be reduced or justly compensated for. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Harris, one else? Very good. Item three, uh, A through G, is the consent agenda. You've had this for a number of days. I've heard no desires to remove anything. If that continues to be so, I would in entertain a motion. I so move approval. In a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed like sign. That item passes. Item 4A, Dr. Stockton, Sidewalks, uh, uh, Armstrong Elementary and Washington Junior High. I'll invite Easy Foster to come up and present that item. <clears throat> Good evening, present husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure for tonight to uh, bring forward for your uh, consideration a uh, project uh, we titled Safe Access for Schools Program. Uh, Conroe Independent School District has been asked by the City of Conroe to participate in a program uh, where they're, the City of Conroe is applying for funding with the Houston Galveston Area Council uh, to to improve sidewalks throughout the city. Um, our participation, Conroe ISD's participation, is specifically related to a progr program within that application called Safe, Safe Access for Schools. What we're asked to participate with will be limited, um, Conroe's ISD's participation will be limited to sidewalks within our property boundaries like we would typically do for a, uh, for a new school within the district. Specifically targeted in this application are Armstrong Elementary and Washington Junior High School. What we're seeking tonight is a, um, is a commitment from the board to allow us to participate in the program. So it's a, a commitment of funds for a project at a future date. The project time frame uh, is dependent upon, uh, the project is dependent upon the cities being awarded funding for the, for the work. So if they're not awarded funding, the project will not happen. The time frame would be sometime in the 2016, 2017 uh, period and we're projecting costs for our participation to be somewhere uh, or approximately $338,000. At this time, we're just seeking your commitment to put uh, set aside those funds to participate in the program contingent upon the city receiving, uh, uh, being awarded funding through their application. Have a motion? I'll, I'll move. And any discussion? Yes. Three hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars of sidewalk seems pretty steep. Um, how much sidewalk are we talking? Are we talking around the whole school, or what are we talking? Well, it it it's a total of almost five thousand linear feet of sidewalk. Uh, but it is, uh, if you can picture Armstrong, which is on Gladstone, it would be from our eastern boundary uh, all the way to the western boundary of the park that we we partner with on the city. It'd be on our side of the road and that stretch of work in front of Armstrong. At Washington Junior High, it is for three sides of that campus. So it would come from the, the I, my direction may be off, but the north, south, boundary. and east. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> but the eastern boundary uh, along the football field, uh, west all the way to the corner, north to the next corner, and then again back east to the far corner of the, the pro property as well. What is it connecting to? It'll be connecting to sidewalks that are constructed by the city as part of this program. And isn't there also some drainage? Um, 
well, involved I mean, in that too? Involved in our cost, uh, it, it, uh, it, it involves some drainage, some fence relocation, some retaining wall improvements to deal with <coughs> trade variations. So we've put, our, we've put our boots on the ground to make sure that the budget is sound. And through as well, the concrete costs have gone sky high. Yeah, and we're also trying to project a year to two years in, in, into the future. And so the 338 takes that into consideration? Yes, sir. Okay. And doesn't this coincide with the city of Conroe trying to increase the mobility of citizens? Mm -hmm. Buses are yes. on the way, that kind of thing, and so that people can safely yeah, I mean, this uh, is move down the down the way without walking in the street. Yes, this is directly related to the city's uh, bus and mass transit program. But, but the question I would ask, Mr. Foster, uh, if 338 is our participation for sidewalks on our property alone, which we can legally do on our or on our contiguous property, what would those sidewalks cost if we weren't participating in this in this plan? Um, are we paying for 100% of the sidewalks in front of our schools? That's what I'm asking. Uh, we are paying for 100% of the sidewalks in front of our schools. Uh, the the cost does take into account the uh, program requires we use the Davis Bacon prevailing wage rates, which are a, a good margin higher than the wage rates that are used for Texas school trades construction uh, in our area. So, what is the benefit of us participating rather than just putting these sidewalks in at, at, under our own? Uh, with, without participating in the grant, if there's no buy down, if you understand. Well, what the uh, the the benefit of participation is to the city to be a good neighbor with the city to cooperate. Our participation makes their chances of receiving funding for the program great. And working working together will help children get to school on sidewalks. And we've done this. That's, in, that's the end. Okay. We've also done this at um, not not part of a grant, but we've done a very similar thing at Geesinger, at Runyon. But it does us very little good to put sidewalks in front of the school if there's not sidewalks down the street for them to walk on there, too. That is correct. So. Correct. And if, if the city of Conroe doesn't get the money, then we're not going to do this project. Right. <clears throat> Anybody else? I have a few questions. Um, is, is, our partici is the funding that they're going to get um, hinged upon our participation in this? I mean, are we that heavy of a hitter in this, for, in this deal? Yes. Well, the uh, the overall scope of the project is about 1.5 million. Uh, the the advisor that's working with the city to put together the application package is suggesting a a, a minimum of a 20 percent participation of the group. Uh, our calculation based on that is uh, approximately 20 percent, or between 17 and 20, depending on whose whose budget's used. The city would be putting in a, a portion of that as well. The, the target contribution is between 34 and 40 percent between the city and Conroe ISD, uh, and that is primarily to drive up the chances of them being selected for for the funding for the remainder of the project. So then, do we do we own them? I mean, is it, is it on our property? It's our our sidewalk. Uh, we, we do own the sidewalk. It, it would it would not be unlike sidewalks in other areas where they are in utility or in easements uh, rights away. Uh, so they are subject to normal you know risk associated with those items, but they would be between our property lines. We would maintain them. We would take care of them, and then if they needed to be you know repaired or replaced in the future, that would be our risk. Okay, and then. Um Does Armstrong want this? I mean, this is, I'm just curious how he came up with these two schools. You know, I've, I've, I've driven, I, I don't know if this is a benefit to Armstrong or not. Is this something that they've been looking for, hoping to get? I mean. Well, there's a, uh, as, as I mentioned before, this is related to the city's uh, plan to bring mass transit or public transit buses into the, in, into the city of Conroe. <coughs> so they have a master plan associated where their bus routes are set. These schools are, within that first phase of their sidewalk development uh, related to where their bus stops are going to be. So these particular campuses will be, in theory, connected to future bus stops that the city will be running. So that if, a, if somebody trying to get to the school was on a city bus, they would be dropped off at a bus stop and have a walking path to our, to our buildings. Okay. I mean, I'm just I'm just kind of putting everything together. I'm trying. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I'm just trying to figure out. It, it sounds to me that they're coming to us and saying we can't get this thing done unless you spend three hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars on sidewalks for your schools. Well, I mean, our participation makes their chances greater. But but the reason that we're bringing it to you today is because it's fit into our philosophy in the past of taking care of our property, 
uh, with sidewalks to make sure our kids are safe once they're on our property. Mm -hmm. So when you ask the question, will the schools want this? Absolutely, because it, get it gets kids off st the street. It gives them a safe place to walk. So it made sense to us because it does fit in our philosophy. So we have put sidewalks independent of anybody else. We have put sidewalks in front of our schools before. We have. Yeah. Singer sure. is yeah. an example. Uh, I'm sure there's others, but I'm, I'm just that's the one that I just have to um, know we, about. We did sidewalks last, like uh, summer before last at Runyon Elementary. We've done yeah. Singer Elementary. Right. We've done Cryer Elementary. Cryer. Cryer Intermediate. So we have put sidewalks mm -hmm. in wherever there there is development to connect to. Where there's not development to connect to, we've chosen not to unless required by some other jurisdiction. Okay. I'm just curious, how much more is it costing us to deal with their you know, day and wage as opposed to what it would if we did it independently, knowing there are no other sidewalks. I'm just wondering how much more we're ending up spending. Um, I haven't done a calculation on the project at large, but a, a concrete finisher, uh, the two wage scales is, is the differential of about $5 per man hour. Okay. A project like this would probably have somewhere around, you know, 10 or 12,000 man hours in it. Um, so you, you're looking at a, a differential of somewhere in the neighborhood of 50, 60, one last question on the 80 percent if we're 20 okay of the of the entire package and on the 80 percent what participation is the city funding versus the grant money they're getting and or are they well the, uh, and the why do we not share in that grant money per pro rata well, the, uh, the, the understand what I'm saying. The the advisors advise the city and and us as the other other party to be roughly equal in their in their participation. So the the, the initial budget uh, did not take into account some of the infrastructure items that prevent sidewalks on Washington, for example. So we've we've raised our our number uh, approximately eighty thousand dollars higher than the city's was. <clears throat> so we would anticipate the city participating on an equal effort, cash for cash. So that the balance of the project is paid for with the with the application funding. I understand, but what I'm saying is we're paying 100 percent of the sidewalks in front of the school. Correct. And the city's paying 50 or 60 or 40 percent of the sidewalks in the city, and we're not sharing in any grant funding, although we're lending our <laughs> the the need for us to be a part of it for safe school grant. I got that. That, that. Why do we not participate in the dollars? I, I'm just asking. I'm not saying that it's an. It's not. I just. I just want to understand why. That if it's a grant, and they need our participation, and we we all want this as good citizens, why do we not get to? If we've got to pay more, we ought to get to participate in the grant funding too. I mean, it's one big project, right? I mean, yes, sir. If, if we're running it down Avenue G and down Gladstone. It's, it's not just what's in front of the school versus what's on city property versus what's in front of Gullo or whatever. It's all together one project for safe school transport. Why do we not participate in the grant dollars? Do you, do you know the answer to that? Well, because the, uh, I mean, it, you, you mentioned that it's all part of safe schools, uh, and it's not. I mean, oh, part okay. of the grant is to, infra to provide additional infrastructure for the city right. related to their uh, public transit system that they're trying to implement. So, uh, I mean, I believe the city is, is committed to implementing public transit. What they are trying to do is supplement their own budget to provide additional sidewalks that, so that they're not dropping people off and not having sidewalks. To and then one last question. If, if we came out of funds with 300000 instead of 338000 and built these sidewalks if in front of our schools today, would that not be the same as us participating in the grant. Why would that not be as good as us paying more to participate in their plan? Well, it just reduces their chances of even uh, though we've already done it. Correct. The, now we can. I mean, in order, in order for it to count, so because we asked them if we could apply uh, sidewalks, we did at, at Pete Junior High, for example, because Pete is part of their overall master plan. Right. Um, but in order to apply work that we had done in the past, it would have to be verified that it was done to the exact requirements of this grant proposal, which the, the biggest differentiator is the wage, wage scale. Wage scale, the wage uh, not the concrete. Bacon. Correct. Uh, yeah. Davis-Bacon wage scale are higher than our Texas Gulf Coast school construction trades wage scales. Okay. So, you've answered all my questions. 
Anybody else? Um, yeah, as a proud union member, I'm really <clears throat> happy to see that we're going to be paying a prevailing wage to the members of the union who will be doing the work for us. Well, let, let me be clear. We do pay prevailing wages. That's just a different wage scale. Yeah. Mr. President, could you have the motion read to me one more time? I don't want to know what. Could we just go through that one more time, please? Well, I, I, what is I, I made the motion that I move that we make the commitment of the funds of $338,000 to be available if and when the city of Conroe receives the grant to enhance the uh, the, the new transit, I don't know what it's called. Let me read this. Yes. No, it, we'd be participating in the safe access of schools program in conjunction with the city of Conroe participation is contingent on the city of Conroe being awarded funding for the program. If awarded, CISD's commitment would be limited to sidewalks on school facilities, which would be tied into city sidewalks outside CISD campuses. Okay. I second the motion. I have a motion yep. and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Excuse me, raising your right hand, I apologize. All those opposed, like sign. All right. Passes. Dr. Stockton, item 4B, capital improvement update. Ms. Foster, will you update us on the capital improvements? At this time, I'd like to give you an update on our projects that are in progress within the district. We're going to start with the Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. Uh, this project is approximately 50% complete. It is on schedule, scheduled to open and to be completed 100% complete uh, this summer for school next school year. What we're looking at is the, uh, the change taking place to the front door, to the curb appeal of this campus. Uh, and I'd like to note that the, the front entry, the admin remodel portion of this job, is scheduled to be turned over in the spring semester. So it'll be, it'll be done before the classroom sections are. Inside, uh, and the walls are going up and the admin area is coming together. What you're looking at up, bundled up in the top right hand corner of the picture is just the, the temporary wiring system. Uh, it's all the stuff that was in place that we're trying to maintain while the, while the school is in, in, uh, being constructed so they can continue their operations. We're looking now at the exterior of the wing that houses the new art labs, the culinary lab, the classroom section. It's the largest portion of the, uh, the uh, addition. Uh, inside this this particular the section, the the interior walls, the corridors, uh, things that way are being being constructed right now. On the other end of the building is where the science labs are. Uh, as you can see, the structural steel is in place. The roof decking is on site, so the uh, this area is, is coming along uh, per the schedule. Um, with the addition of population coming to the Oak Ridge complex, uh, we're also expanding the cafeteria of this building. What you're looking at here is the exterior wall of the current cafeteria where we've, we've altered the building structure so now uh, the steel for the section is on site. We'll be infilling this area to expand the cafeteria seating area. At Vogel Intermediate, uh, this project is uh, nearing completion. Uh, it's scheduled for turnover this Christmas break. We are receiving the furniture, uh, fixtures and equipment for the uh, classrooms this week. Uh, we are turning over the uh, building uh, technology will come set up the computers for the teachers on our work day on January 5th for our students to begin their classes in this new section of the building on January 6th. How many additional classrooms? There are eight additional classrooms and two uh, small group instruction rooms. That's the end of the, the pictures. I'd like to report to you now the LED lighting project. Uh, that project as reported last month is, was nearing completion in November. At this point, the original contract has been completed. Uh, next month, we will receive a, uh, our, our rebate presentation uh, for the fixtures installed underneath the original contract. We are now, as I reported last month, trying to stretch our stretch our dollars even further. Uh, as of tonight, we've installed 5,561 fixtures, and our goal of 16,000 is 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 attainable. And we're trying to stretch every dollar so that at the end of the uh, project, when we're done, I can stand in front of you and say we've installed 16,000 fixtures uh, and made our return on investment even better. Uh, the the project has has gone well. Uh, we should start seeing the uh, utility bills at those at those campuses come back, and then uh, we look forward to uh, getting our our rebate uh, next month. So 5,561 on our way to 16,000. 15,561. <clears throat> All right. 
all that. I thought that was a long way to go with energy <laughs> savings. It's, it's here. It's no. just age. <coughs> and that is all I have to report tonight. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item 5A, financial reports, Dr. Stock. Mr. Rice, will you come present the financial reports, please? Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure tonight to present the financial statements to y'all for the month of November for the district. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're going to look at is our balance sheet. It shows our assets, our liabilities, and the breakdown of our fund balances for each of the funds. One thing we always like to look at each month is our cash and our investments. Of course, our, mo our most liquid assets. And as you can see, the majority of our funds are invested and uh, earning us some good interest. The next statement is our income statement. It shows our revenues and expenditures and fund balances. Looking at our local revenues, as you can see, the majority of our revenues are coming from our property taxes and the general fund and debt service fund. Uh, food sales and our child nutrition program. And then self-funded, it's coming from premium contributions. Some good news coming up on Christmas. Needed some good news from our self-funded insurance plan for the month of November. Uh, total revenues of uh, 2950000 Total expenses, 2466000 For revenues over expenditures of $483,000. So a good month for the plan. December's trending at least break even right now. So hopefully over the break we don't, uh, we don't get any high claims or anything, but it's trending pretty well. Uh, participation at our wellness centers. Oak Ridge, we had 461, Conroe 184 for total participation of 645, so, so that's remaining steady. Our $109 million bond transition plan, we've currently expended and encumbered $59.3 million. Uh, estimate to complete of the projects, 46.5. Projected forecast of the program, $105.8 million. And that's leaving us with a little contingency of about $3.2 million. Our investments for the month. At the end of October, we had $224 million invested. At the end of November, $255 million. Uh, the majority of that increase is uh, the bond sale that we had. We received funding on that. Our short term investments, uh, our pools and our Capital One, the WAM is one day. Uh, the yield of that is just about 17 basis points. Our long-term investments, so the WAM is 594 days, uh, yielding about 53 basis points. We did have uh, one of our investments called that we are replacing. We had one called. You know, rates took a little dip, so they, they start calling those things back pretty quickly. So when we combine our portfolio together, the WAM is 86 days, yielding uh, roughly 22 basis points. Mr. Rice, on the, on the uh, Treasury notes, yes, sir. what's the longest we're going out? Three years. Okay. That's for any investment, though, right? That is for any investment. Mm -hmm. and, and that is part of the, the $50 million that I remember that, that we that talked we about laddering out. out. Mm -hmm. So you're beating the curve by 20 basis points. Good job, Mr. Rice. Thank you. And I couldn't, my, my staff wanted fireworks, but I gave dollar signs and flying money. So. <laughs> we're, we're glad you didn't set off fireworks in the boardroom. <laughs> Right, thank you very much. Uh, before we go to item 6A, because we're going to end the closed session and most of you will take that opportunity to leave, some of you have to stay. Uh, on behalf of the board, we just want to wish you a very safe and blessed holiday. Hope you all have a great one and uh, look, um, we hope wish you a very restful period and a good time with family and uh, just thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you do, okay? Item 6A, uh, closed session of the board will now be held on matters containing in the notice for this meeting as authorized by sections 551.071, 072, and 074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either A, 
this public meeting upon reconvening at this public meeting or b at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine closed session of the board will now be held it is 6 44 p.m it is now an open set is everybody here no not yet no. Yes. No. Yes. No. All right. The board is now in open session. It's 8.30 p.m. The next uh, item on the agenda is uh, item 8A, uh, Board of Trustees end of year continuing education announcement, which I am going to read to you in accordance with the Chapter 61 of the Texas Administrative Code. I'm pleased to announce that all members of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees have completed the state continuing education requirements for school, school board members, with the exception of Mr. Hubert and Mrs. Bush, who were sworn in last month. Mr. Hubert and Mrs. Bush were scheduled to complete the retired, required training excuse me, within the designated timelines. So congratulations to everybody, and thank you for your hard work. Um, item 8B, uh, I am pleased to announce that uh, Mr. Dayton Williams, Mr. Ray Sanders, Mr. Skeeter Huber have all agreed for my request to serve as the, on the two-year uh, term as Audit and Investment Committee uh, members. So I want to thank them for their commitment to that, uh, that chore. And um, so be it. And uh, item number 8C, termination of prob probation uh, employment contract uh, of Ms. Michelle Hernandez. 2014-15, Ms. Gladys. Mr. President, me. I move that um, the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees terminate the probationary period employment contract of Michelle Hernandez at the end of 2014-2015 school year in the best interest of the district. Second. Thank you for that motion and that second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And it passes. Motion. And the motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. And it's approved. Thank you very much.